Hi everybody, Brian Norcross here with a Sunday evening update on Tropical Storm Debbie. There is a lot of information, there's a lot going on, so uh, let's get right to it. For the uh, latest advisory information, here you have it. 65 mile an hour winds is the estimate from the National Hurricane Center. Now we haven't had any uh, hurricane hunters or NOAA research aircraft in the storm since earlier this afternoon. So as of five o'clock, there was no update from inside the storm. We're awaiting that for the 8 p.m. update this evening. So be sure you uh, check in on that. So the storm may be intensifying some because we see these very cold clouds. See the, the dark very dark, deep red and blacks there. That's a sign that uh, thunderstorms are building high in the atmosphere. And if they maintain themselves, that may be a core of the system developing. As of earlier this afternoon, the hurricane hunters measured 992 millibars. So that's what we're continuing to go with there. Storm has turned a little bit to the north and now heading due north at 12 miles an hour. So slowly it is slowing down, only moving 12 miles an hour uh, now, and it's going to get moved slower as it moves toward the coast. The slower the storm moves, the more storm surge it produces because it continues to blow with the winds blowing like this. It continues to blow in the same direction for longer. So therefore the water builds up the coast more and that's one reason that we have uh, very high storm surge numbers in the forecast i'll have them for you here in just a moment when we look at the visible picture this is like a photograph from space the other is sort of a computer enhancement of the temperature of the clouds now we can see if you look down here now dry air is filtering in here sort of the that's a good thing on a couple uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it is inhibiting the storm from developing like super fast in this really excellent from a storm standpoint atmospheric pattern. Not perfect by any means, not pristine like we thought it might be or we're afraid it might be, but uh, it's still quite conducive for strengthening is the thinking. But look at these clouds at the surface here turning and it looks like it's trying to develop another center in here. So the question is, is it is it going to jog a little bit to the right or not? We'll wait for the hurricane hunters to get out there to actually determine that. And the NOAA P3, that only they don't come from far away. They'll be in there with their tail Doppler radar. And that Doppler radar actually measures wind speeds in the tail of the airplane very precisely. And we really can tell exactly where the center is at that time. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see a little bit of a jog this way and maybe the cone shifts a little bit around. Always with developing systems, we expect things to shift one way or the other. That's why you always have to continually check back, especially when the system is close to, coast, to the coast and in the development uh, stages. When we look at the radar, we can very clearly see this circulation in here. Thing is, the radar is over here coming out of Ruskin south of Tampa. And so uh, if this is not looking at the surface. And when we uh, talk about where the center of the system is, we're talking about at the surface of the ocean or actually 10 meters above the surface, where here, because of the curvature of the Earth, we're shooting somewhere a few thousand feet at least up in the air. Well, the air aircraft, when it goes out there, is going to determine all of this uh, very precisely. So we'll see if this is actually going to be the new center or if there's more of a general center somewhere in here or, or what. We don't really quite know. We had uh, just a little while ago uh, a, a tornado warning in one of these bands and I was going to show that to you just because they come and they go quickly. Just be aware if one of these bands is coming toward you, looks like we have one uh, offshore here uh, now moving uh, in uh, just as I'm recording this, it's just after 530. So this band is producing where you see the flashing green there. That's a flash flood warning because of just ultra strong rain all at once. You see the bands moving up toward Fort Lauderdale. I was just checking to see, not Fort Lauderdale, St. Petersburg, uh, checking to see if we had any more tornado warnings, but I don't see any right now. The, the, the bottom line is these bands are producing torrential rain and they're unusually gusty because the winds aloft in circulation are stronger than they are at the surface. So likely hurricane force winds blowing above the surface. Well, when you get where you see these red cells, 
here. They're all over the place. When you get one of those, that's pulling those strong winds down to the ground, and then you get these ultra-strong gusts. So I want everybody to be be aware. Uh, the governor is asking you not to be out driving around because you can be very surprised. It can be just light rain and then boom, gusty torrential rain, which of course can be dangerous, especially if you're driving uh, in uh, traffic. So let's just uh, look at what the latest advisory is in terms of the uh, forecast. You see the idea is to have an 85 mile an hour hurricane here in the overnight hours. Uh, when it's kind of a beam of Cedar Key. So that is anticipating that the center is going to uh, actually organize and consolidate, and that will allow it to uh, continue strengthening. It's, uh, I don't know if it's on a pause now because we don't have the hurricane hunters. Obviously, it's strengthened through the day today, but 85 miles an hour somewhere here, and then moving ahead, and the estimate is inland. Now we're inland past Perry, Florida. So this county here is Taylor County. They are really under the gun because remember if the storm, let's say the storm is right here, the winds are blowing like this. So the winds are blowing from the uh, Gulf, or in this case, it's called Appalachie Bay, this body of water up there in the northern Gulf, blowing inland. That's where the strongest winds are. So Taylor County is on the right side of most of the logical tracks here, unless the system were to veer uh, quite a bit uh, to the right. Tallahassee is also obviously in the cone, but but to get for Tallahassee to get the worst of it, the system would have to come up here on the left side of the cone because, again, winds come this way. Those are the strongest winds. Still, Tallahassee is going to get strong winds. The estimate is that uh, you're going to have a hurricane in here. Winds coming this way might not be as strong in Tallahassee, but still plenty strong to take down tree limbs. Anybody uh, up associated with the state of Florida, the uh, Florida State University, uh, Florida A&M University, Tallahassee State College, anybody with the schools in Tallahassee, park your car in the parking garage. Don't park it under these uh, big trees that can come down in these uh, strong winds. And that goes really for anybody uh, to the right of where the center is coming ashore. So anybody in North Florida here, you're subject to very strong winds that might take down trees. And uh, even anybody where those bands are coming in, uh, use good sense here. Park your car where a tree limb is not going to fall on it here because we're going to have some power outages as this system slows down and moves across North Florida. And there you see the slowing. Look at this. So here is the idea Monday um, afternoon. So that p.m. means 2 p.m. in the afternoon, more or less. Now let's look. This is Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, Friday afternoon. So this is a slog through here, uh, and we don't know exactly what it's going to do. The Hurricane Center is assuming it's going to wiggle its way uh, and kind of, kind of continue on a forward motion, but there is uh, no confidence that that's going to happen because when we look at the various forecast models, you see they're more or less taking the European model, which is this one that kind of wiggles offshore and then comes along, and then it actually continues on past this line. They're taking a version of that, but the GFS comes up here and does kind of a loop and ends up over here in Alabama. The H wharf goes this way. Uh, the, all of these indicate significant weakening while it's doing this, but also the models that take it offshore say it's going to strengthen like the European and then come back like this. So if it does that, it's going to produce storm surge along this coast somewhere. But there is no confidence at all that, that because there's no steering going on here, it's just a drifting kind of thing and small influences that we know exactly where the worst of this is going to be. The uh, National Weather Center, part of the National Weather Service, makes the forecasts of rain and they have to assume some kind of track and they have this large area of possible very heavy rain from about Georgetown in South Carolina down to Savannah in uh, Georgia, including Charleston. Look at this. This is 12 to 24 inches of rain over a few days. So that's just uh, like continuous heavy rain or uh, more or less continuous. And then if we get 
a storm that's in this area here where the winds are coming around like this, that's going to produce storm surge. And so the, they have two threats there. One is, let's just take uh, Charleston Harbor as an example. The water gets pushed into Charleston Harbor and, and the high tide. And then when the tide comes out, it can't come out because the wind is pushing it in. So it builds up and there, that's what you get storm surge and you get flooding of the low lying areas there. But then the rain falls up, uh, let's say on up here, uh, farther up at the higher elevation. Remember, Charleston is very low and that water comes down the rivers and uh, into Charleston Harbor, rivers and creeks that all converge there. And that water can't get out and that increases the water level and increases uh, the storm surge, uh, essentially. So this combination is a significant threat for any low-lying areas. And the, the threat here for the heavy rain, notice it starts at about the Tampa Bay area, includes the Jacksonville area, uh, Savannah, Brunswick, Charleston, Georgetown, on up to Wilmington, and then back with the bullseye right in here in Georgia and South Carolina. Again, though, imagine that that could move one way or the other. So we have various threats. We have that heavy rain threat and there are flood watches all throughout that area. Then we have the wind threat. Right now, the tropical storm warning extends all the way to Savannah and it will be stretched on up the coast as well. It's just a matter of timing. They put out the warning nominally two or two and a half days in advance and it's just going to take longer than that for it to get up um, to Beaufort and Charleston in South Carolina. So this is the uh, watch. This is the warning uh, over here. Now, the, also we have the storm surge threat, of course. Uh, as I was talking about, if the winds come onshore, that's going to hold the water in. So the water is going to rise due to the onshore wind. And somewhere in this area, you have up to four feet above normal high tide. Not everywhere, but somewhere. So everybody along that coast there needs to be ready for the tides to be up to four feet above normal. And then we have for Florida. So that's the whole uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, uh, North Florida threat. And then we have here in Florida and the hurricane warning includes not quite Tallahassee. So Leon County where Tallahassee is, is in a tropical storm warning, but very close to the hurricane warning area. So everybody in Tallahassee needs to be uh, geared up for the threat from this thing. But the big threat is in uh, Taylor County and on down south, closer to Cedar Key, down toward Dixie County, Citrus County, uh, all under a significant threat here from the storm. And then the inland counties here as well, because this storm isn't going to just shut off when it goes inland. And then that corridor is going to go on across into Georgia. In terms of the storm surge, the threat is to the right of where the center comes ashore. That's why up to 10 feet, if it occurs at high tide, somewhere in that area, up to 10 feet, and that's from uh, southeast of Tallahassee all the way around almost to Cedar Key, and then up to eight feet around the Cedar Key area, and then up to five feet in the north uh, suburbs of Tampa Bay, and this would include Port Ritchie and uh, up in Pasco County, up to five feet if the storm surge coincides with the high tide. Uh, luckily, low tide is going to occur overnight. So not all these places are going to have these high numbers unless the storm slows down or speeds up. And we just can't tell that. So the idea is you prepare for the maximum and then you hope for some uh, lower number. Uh, but even in the Tampa Bay area, up to four feet of storm surge, we already saw over three feet in the Fort Myers area earlier today. That's when the wind coming around this way, uh, actually it was coming more like this, coincided with the high tide. So the tide makes a tremendous difference, the timing of the tide all along uh, that coast. So what's going on here and why is this such an annoying, difficult storm? It's because what's been pulling it to the north, tugging it to the north, 
is this low pressure dip in the jet stream that's in between this high pressure out here, which is the heat dome high, causing the uh, continuous uh, overheated temperatures in the western U.S. and the typical Bermuda high that's moved offshore. So this is low pressure between the two high pressure areas. Now that's is uh, talking about Monday morning, tomorrow morning. Watch as we go through uh, Monday and Tuesday. Storm doesn't move much because this dip that's pulling it north is moving out. And as it moves out, the storm can't move very much. As a matter of fact, this high is forecast to build in like that. And then depending on exactly how that configuration is in one of the computer forecasts, some of the computer forecasts drive the system back to the west. That's why you saw those loops. Others, like the European, say, no, it's not going to do that. It's actually going to get eventually pulled this way, and another dip in the jet stream coming along is going to actually continue moving it slowly on away. And we just can't uh, say which one of those is going to happen. So bottom line is, in either case, it's going to move slowly, dump a tremendous amount of rain, forecasts up to 30 inches of rain uh, in some isolated spots. So this is more, the, everybody in the Carolinas is familiar with Hurricane Florence uh, that moved very slowly. This has similarities to the potential of Hurricane Florence. Also Harvey, which did these figure eights over the Houston area. So some sort of combination of all that, a, a very serious situation for starting tomorrow and especially into Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, uh, very, very likely a water disaster for the southeast coast, maybe North Florida as well. And uh, everybody in those areas needs to stay in very close touch with their emergency management officials, know what areas are most likely to have flooding or wind threats or storm surge threats. Um, everything is, is coming. Let me mention to you, if you're watching this video, you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on Facebook, um, that uh, we're also live on Fox Weather. And if you don't know how to get Fox Weather, a full-time weather channel, you can go to foxweather.tv. Or if you want to pause the video and you want to scan that QR code, that'll tell you how to get it on your TV, on Roku TV or Samsung TV or Apple TV or Amazon Fire or on your phone or on your iPad. If you go to that, uh, that uh, address or that QR code, uh, it'll help you out. All right, everybody that's in the uh, threat zone, be sure you're paying close attention to what the threats are in your area. This is a very serious uh, situation. Uh, it may turn out to be that the flooding from this ends up being the, the big event because the worst storm surge is going to be in a fairly unpopulated area. But uh, population centers like Tallahassee and some of the other towns up there are going to be uh, in the bullseye here, and that's going to happen tomorrow. All right. Uh, good luck, everybody, and have a good Sunday evening.